Hello, pre-calculator students. Here are 13.5 sums of infinite series, and the objective is to find sum of an infinite geometric series. Let's start by looking at the classic paradox from the Greek philosopher Zeno. Here's Zeno with some of his followers at the doors to truth and falsity. To get across the hall and to the door, Zeno must travel first, travel first halfway across. Okay? Like, let's say he's trying to get from this corner over to this corner. First, he's got to get halfway across. And then half of what remains. And half of that, so that's another eighth. And then half of that, the sixteenth. And then thirty-second. And then sixty-fourth. And you can see poor Zeno is just going to go crazy. Ooh, okay, so what do you do? What do you do? Seems to be a paradox because it's an infinite sum of finite bits of time, which must be an infinite amount of time. So Zeno reasoned that this is a paradox. You can't get across the room. You can't get across the hallway. Now, clearly he does. And that's where the paradox comes in. Your logic seems to tell you one thing, and reality tells you another. So how do we analyze this infinite sum, a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus a thirty-second? Well, let's take a look here. We look at the problem as a sequence of partial sums S sub n. That is, our first partial sum is just one-half, the first term of the series. But S sub 2 is T sub 1 plus T sub 2 the sum of the first two terms of the series, and you get 3 fourths. S sub 3 ends up being 7 eighths. S sub 4 is 15 sixteenths. And S sub 5 is 31 30 seconds. So can you think of a formula for this 1 half, 3 fourths, 7 eighths, 15 sixteenths, and so forth, 31 30 seconds? It seems like we're always one shy of the denominator, and the denominator is 2 to the n. And the numerator is one shy of that, 2 to the n minus 1. An infinite sum s is defined as the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So, our formal definition is s equals the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. So in our last example, all this adds up to 1 because this sequence of partial sums, a half, 3, 4, 7, 8, 15, 16, 31 seconds, 31, 30 seconds, clearly has a limit of 1. Now, can we prove that? Prove S is the limit as n goes to infinity of S sub n. We came up with a formula for S sub n. It was um, 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. So it's a limit as n goes to infinity of 2 to the n over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n. So it's a limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus 1 over 2 to the n. And so that's the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 half to the n. This is 1 because it just is the sequence 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. A half to the n, this is a number r less than 1, and we just showed how that's equal to 0. So there's our limit. And that's the proof. So if the sequence of partial sum has a finite limit s like we just saw, then the infinite series is said to converge. It converges on a limit. If the sequence of partial sums approaches infinity or has no limit, then the infinite series is said to diverge. Now, we're going to focus on infinite geometric series. So if the absolute value of r is less than 1, then the infinite geometric series, given by these formulas, converges to the sum t sub 1 over 1 minus i. Remember that? It's one of the easiest formulas from this section. Now, if absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1 and t1 is not equal to 0, then the infinite geometric series does not converge. It diverges. Diverges. So here's our proof. Since it's geometric, S sub n in a geometric was t sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. So it's the limit. The infinite sum is the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sums S sub n. So it's the limit as n goes to infinity of t sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. And so now we can take the limit of each of these parts. The limit as n goes to infinity of t sub 1 times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus the limit 
as n goes to infinity of r to the n all over the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 minus the limit as n goes to infinity of r. Okay, now notice n is changing. So any of these things that don't have an n of it don't get affected. So it's t sub 1 times 1 minus, and down here this is 1 minus r. This is our tricky term, but since since the absolute value of r is less than 1, we had that rule that this is going to approach 0. And so that's how we get our formula, t sub 1 over 1 minus r. It's a simplification of this finite sum. So it's actually easier to find the infinite sum because the finite sum, the partial sum, you have to get this uh, nasty term in there. So find the sum of the infinite geometric series 9 minus 6 plus 4. We're told it's geometric, so let's come up with r. r is negative 6 over 9, so that's negative 2 thirds. And the first term is 9. So the infinite sum is t sub 1 over 1 minus r. So that's 9 over 1 minus a minus 2 thirds or 9 over 1 plus 2 thirds. We can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3 to get rid of these secondary fractions. So we get 27 over 3 plus 2, or 27 fifths. 27 fifths for the infinite geometric sum. For what values of x does the following infinite series converge? Well, we can see that the common ratio is x minus 2 over 1. And that's also true if you take this fourth term, x minus 2 cubed over x minus 2 squared, and you still get x minus 2. So the common ratio is definitely x minus 2. Are we set with that part? Okay. And the condition, hold it, the condition to have an infinite sum and have it con uh, converge is that the absolute value of r is less than 1. So the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than 1. So x minus 2 must be between negative 1 and positive 1. And so that puts x between 1 and 3. So those are the values of x that will make it converge. Notice what happens if x equals 2. You just get 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which technically does converge. It just adds up to 1. The infinite repeating decimal, 0.454545, dot, 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 can be written as an infinite series. And what's the sum of this series? Well, again, we can talk about the first term being 0.45 and the common ratio being 0.001. So the infinite sum is t sub 1 over 1 minus r. 0.45 over 1 minus 0.001. Actually, it's a hundredth, so let me fix that. Take out one of our zeros here. It's one hundredth, because we're moving the decimal place over twice. 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So we get 0 0.45 over 0 0.99, 45 99 Take out a 9, and you get 5 elevenths. And you can check it on your calculator. 5 elevenths does give you that repeating decimal. Now, how can you divide a length into thirds? Well, this is something called, called the Charlie Brown wishy-washy approach. First, let's recall Zeno. Remember what Zeno had to do? He was trying to show that you can't get to the other end of the room because you have to keep on cutting your distance in half. So first he cuts in half here. We get up to about there. It's easy to cut things in half. And then he cuts in half again. So we're about there. And then you cut in half again. So you're about there. And so forth. And all those sums, a half plus a fourth plus an eighth plus a sixteenth plus dot dot adds up to, well, we can use our formula, right? It's an infinite sum. The first term is a half. The common ratio is a half. You get a half over a half. That equals one. Now, with Charlie Brown, we got a different story. Charlie Brown's trying to get over here to the Halloween party. But he gets so wishy-washy about things. So, first, he goes halfway. Let me just do this on, uh, just take a break here for a second. Let's make another Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown gets about halfway. He gets halfway and goes, oh, wait, I don't have a costume. So he backs up. And halfway of that distance back, he goes, oh, wait, this is my Charlie Brown costume. So he says, no, I'm going to go ahead to the party. And then he goes forward. 
And he goes, oh, no, wait. No, I am Charlie Brown, so it's not really a costume. And then he backs up again. And he keeps cut going backwards half the distance he came from the last point. See how this process works? And now we get into there. And it's getting pretty tiny now, isn't it? Somewhere in there. So somewhere in there. Where is that? Well, let's break out our ruler. And sure enough, Charlie Brown has ended up about one inch or a third of the way. Let's see why this works. It works because we're taking a half, but then subtracting a fourth, and then adding an eighth, and then subtracting a sixteenth, and so forth. So our first term is a half, but the common ratio is negative a half. So the infinite sum, t sub 1 over 1 minus r, ends up being 1 half over 1 minus negative a half, or 1 half over 3 halves, and there's our 1 third. Okay? Flange out.